Hello, everyone. My name is Cotton, and I'm here with... Leave me alone. Okay, uh, what do you do for a living? This. Are you going to stop at some point? No. Mm, all right, then. More on the evening news at 10. Ladies, gentlemen, and tarnished of all ages, are you ready to defile some corpses? No. The answer you're looking for should be no. Why did you say yes? You're moving along through the world, minding your own business. Then one day you go back to the round table hold and another room is open. What's inside of it? A red lined figure, unwilling to talk and unwilling to move. This is a man known as the loathsome dung eater. Why is he called that? Well, it is never explicitly stated in game, but I'll, I'll leave you to make some guesses on that. While initially he is simply just there, you can actually make him move. And in fact, he has a whole quest line that leads to unlocking an entire ending of the game, a full armor set, and a very cool weapon. On top of this, it also has a couple of safeguards that make it less likely, though not impossible, to lock yourself out of the questline through main story boss progress. So let's dive right in. First up, in order to have this guy show up in your round table in the first place, you must reach the Altus Plateau for the first time. This is the trigger for his arrival. From this point, in order to make him interact with you at all, you need to find one seedbed curse item. As we learned from his dialogue, these are essentially the results of him defiling someone that he has killed. He he curses them and their family for generations to come and any ability they have to be reborn as anything. And if you find a corpse that he has been working on, then you will find a seedbed curse waiting for you there. Technically, you can collect every single seedbed curse before interacting with him at all, which is neat and something to keep in mind as far as time efficiency when trying to complete this for yourself. I'll tell you how to get each and every seedbed curse later, but for the sake of keeping the quest steps all together, let's go through those first. Once you have one seedbed curse, show it to Dung Eater in the round table hold. He will give you the sewer jail key and ask you to free him from there. Head to the sewers under Lane Dell, to the underground roadside site of Grace that is the main starting point of the area, then head out of the room and left, drop into the open grate in the back of the area, turn left and follow the pike past the poisonous flowers until you reach a ladder. Climb it to the top, watch out for the hand that is waiting to spring a trap in the middle of the room, and in the back behind a locked door is the real dung eater. Use your key to open it up and then mercifully please stop him from bashing his face on the wall by setting him free. If you then go back to the round table hold, you'll find him missing and a message on the floor telling you that he plans to uh, defile you and he would like you to come to the outer moat to do so. Some people are just so forward, you know? The outer moat he is referring to is a little pool outside the inner walls of Lane Dell, the capital city. What happens here will be a bit different depending on your game state. This is Blackguard Big Boggart. He stole a necklace from a woman named Rhea and he sold boiled prawn. Personally, I murdered him when he tried to sell me back a necklace that I was very aware that he had stolen, but this was before my moral compass was adjusted to try and keep every single NPC in the game as alive as possible, regardless of my personal thoughts on them. If you do kill him or just don't initiate his questline in the first place, then upon arrival at this pond, Dung Eater will show up as an invasion and upon defeat, he will drop the Sword of Milos. If instead you dealt with Blackguard peacefully, you can buy boiled prawns from him in his an original location, and then when you do, he will move to the same outer moat area that Dung Eater goes to. If you find the Blackguard here, he will warn you about Dung Eater, and then once you reload the area and return, you will find him there beside his pot of boiling crabs tied to a chair and dying. Upon death, he will drop his bearing bell, his mask, his fist weapon, and also a seed bed curse. After the Blackguard finishes his dying, Dung Eater will spawn as an invasion, and once again, when you defeat him, you will get the Sword of Milos. No no matter which way that the last part happened, you can still get enough seedbed curses to finish the quest line, and Dung Eater will move back to the round table hold and his jail in the sewers. In the round table hold, he will ask you to feed his real body seedbed curses. So return to the sewers and back to where he was kept before to do as he asks. Once you have given Dung Eater a total of five seedbed curses, the screen will go black. Some dialogue will play, and then you'll fade back in to find him dead and the mending rune of the fell curse 
curse on his body. This presents a route for a different ending of the story of the game. And I don't want to be the bearer of bad news, but this is a bit of a stinky ending, morally speaking, of course. I mean, it comes from a man called the Loathsome Dung Eater, who goes around defiling corpses. I, I don't know what you're expecting, but regardless, it is an ending to the game nonetheless. After this, refresh at a sight of grace and go back to his cell to receive his armor set for yourself, which has the unique effect of boosting the Omen Baron and Regal Omen Baron item by 5% for each piece for a total of 20% of a boost. And that is the questline complete. But then where are the seedbed curses required to make this happen, and how many are there in total? Well, the answer is six-ish, which leaves just a little bit of room for error, and by error, I mean progressing the game without knowing about this quest line. The first seedbed curse we have already gone over, and it comes from Blackguard Big Boggart if you successfully move his location before freeing Dung Eater. This one can break if you do Volcano Manor without meeting the Blackguard first. However, simultaneously, if you do meet Blackguard first, then he will still exist until after you finish the main story, even, and so you can go buy prompts from him, and then you can move him to the right location. This is a seedbed curse that will allow you to do this quest line even in the end game, provided that you did meet this man in the first place. The second seedbed curse comes from the Volcano Manor itself. Under the main estate, there is a site of grace called Temple of Aigle. From here, you want to progress out the side and up the elevator, or if you don't have this elevator yet, then from the site of grace, go up the raising platform up to the balcony, then jump down to the sounds below and loop your way around until you reach said elevator. From the top of the elevator, run forwards until you head through a door, then take a right at your next convenience. In the room with all the staircases, turn around halfway up and then go through the door to find a stone sword key locked doorway. Enter here and slowly drop down the parkour challenge, I, I guess I'd call it that even though it isn't very challenging, reach the floor at the bottom and then in the back corner you will find a corpse that holds one seed bed curse. The third seedbed curse is in Lane Dell, the royal capital. From the east rampart site of Grace, progress past the army of bubble boys on the left into the next building along, and then head down the elevator. Go into the next room and up the ladder, then follow the staircase up to the top floor to see once more a defiled corpse on a chair holding a seedbed curse. The fourth curse is also in Lane Dell. This one from the west capital rampart site of Grace, jump out of the window on the left to reach the lower area, find the structures in the back left, and jump upon them to get a side entrance into this large manor. Once inside, you'll recognize it as an inch for inch copy of our own round table hold. Find the room that mimics where Dung Eater normally sits, and you will find another defiled corpse inside of it, with an item waiting to be picked up. The fifth curse is in the Hallig Tree Mega Dungeon, which is extremely late game. If you don't have it yet and want to know how to get there, then you first must reach the consecrated Snowfields region of the game. Then get to the Ordina Lethargical Town site of Grace in the north. From there, head to the Everjail at the top of the town in the back, activate it, and slowly work your way through the town to light four candles, three of which are on rooftops. The most difficult and useful route that there is, is this ladder that is hidden in a bit of an alcove. While you are doing this, invisible enemies will be attacking you from all directions, so if you want to make it a touch easier, you can always bring a sentry torch, which are acquired from the hermit merchant at this location in the outskirts of Lane Dell. Once you are in the Hallig Tree itself, you must progress past the first major forced boss to reach the prayer room site of grace. Once here, head forwards until you reach a wall, and instead of turning around, jump over the side onto the support beam, and then down to the floor in front. On the far end of this is another support beam, jump up to it, and then follow it upwards to reach a balcony. At the end of this balcony is one more seedbed curse for you to interact with yourself. Sixth is also from the prayer room site of grace and the hallig tree, but for this one you want to head forwards to the wall and instead of jumping over the railing, just head further down the stairs. Keep going downstairs until you come across an archway. Instead of heading through, jump over the right onto the lower support beam, and then drop onto the overhanging ledge. Go in the dark room beside you to find yourself in an attic, within which lays what is technically the final seedbed curse. Technically? Yeah, technically, because one of those from earlier, well, it comes back, sort of. If you haven't finished Crumbling Fair Missoula as a region of the game, this is probably where you want to turn away from this because it will maybe spoil something that happens after a boss. But once you defeat said boss, you'll know that it's happened, Lane Dell, the capital city, will totally change, and as a result, every item that you left here without picking up will be gone, for the most part. Unfortunately, the Eastern Seedbed Curse is lost forever. However, the seedbed curse that was in the fortified manor on the west still exists, and if you missed it earlier, can still be picked up. 
This, in combination with Blackguard Big Boggart's Seedbed Curse from his quest line, allows you to reach five Seedbed Curses even if you haven't even started this quest line until after finishing the main story of the game. To reach this one in its new location, starting from the City of Ash, Site of Grace, head forwards until the stairway that leads to a boss room, and then instead of going up said stairway, jump off the side about halfway up to reach this previously accessible area. Continue on from here to jump down to the left, back into this lowered area, then continue to the very far back of that behind the gargoyle enemy to find the same seedbed curse from earlier, still able to be picked up, just in case you missed it before, in a different location. And that just about covers it, everyone. I've been Cotton Dinosaur, and this has been the Loathsome Dung Eater quest line, as well as the seven locations that you can find six seedbed curses to trade into one man in return for a main story ending, a weapon, and an armor set. Have you already done this quest line, or is it one that you've been avoiding as long as possible? Like if you liked the video, subscribe to the notification bell for more, and most importantly, ladies and gentlemen, until next time, stay sweet. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement To take our insanity and turn it into entertainment Yes, I said entertainment twice To reiterate that it is nice To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis When you let us in your homes to make the whole world our stage Is, uh, goodbye